Should I shoot RAW or JPEG? Well, what's the difference? Is editing a JPEG bad? Is RAW really worth the effort? But what can RAW do that JPEG can't? Will Simpson here and welcome to Exploring Photography. Today we're going over what JPEG and RAW files are and the difference between them. The first thing to understand is both of them are file types. Now, most cameras, if not all, take JPEG or some form of it, and most cameras like DSLRs, mirrorless, and even some camera phones now are starting to be able to take RAW. You've probably heard the term JPEG and understand it to be a picture. When someone sends you a photo, it's generally a JPEG. JPG stands for Joint Photographic Experts Group, hence why you sometimes see the extension JPG or JPEG. It's the same thing. It's the common method used to send, capture, and share photos. The file type is a compressed file type, which means that it's made smaller by lowering the quality. It makes it easier to share, upload, download, etc. RAW is the unedited, unaltered, un-everything format that a camera can take. It takes every beautiful morsel of data that the sensor can capture and says, here you go, have fun. It gives you the freedom to edit, potentially recover under or overexposed data, get the accurate colors, pretty much do whatever you want as long as the sensor captured it. The downfall to raw file types is they're much larger than JPEGs. I mean, much larger. They have a lot more data and they can usually only be used after they've been brought into an editing software like Lightroom or Photoshop. There are several more, but you can find them online. I personally use Lightroom and Photoshop. Once they're edited, then you have to convert them into a usable file type like JPEG. Now you might be saying, well, then why not just use JPEG at the beginning? Only makes sense. If you're gonna convert them into JPEGs anyways, why not just start them out that way? Well, let's look at an analogy. Let's say you're at a restaurant and you order a hot fudge sundae. Now, they bring you a hot fudge sundae. It has some ice cream, has maybe some nuts, has some chocolate sauce, maybe a cherry or something like that. You might be able to get a little extra ice cream, you might be able to get a little extra hot fudge or a little less, but your, your choices are very limited. You kind of get what you get. That's JPEG. Now, let's say you make it yourself. Well, you get to choose the brand of ice cream you want, how much ice cream you want, you get to choose chocolate sauce or hot fudge and exactly the amount you want drizzled to perfection. You get to choose whether you want walnuts, pecans, peanuts, whatever you want, how much you want. If you want slices of strawberries, you can put slices of strawberries on it and you make it exactly how you want it. There's really no limits, that's raw. Without getting too technical, but you'll still be able to see the comparison. A JPEG can record up to 16 million colors. That's red, greens, and blues in combinations. That is a ton of colors. I mean, it's just, I can't even fathom that. And you might be thinking, well, I don't need any more, that's plenty. But to give you the comparison, a raw photo, a raw format can record up to 68 billion with a B, colors, up to four trillion colors, depending on the file type. That is, that is huge difference. And that also explains the size difference, but it also shows you capabilities of the two different file types. In addition to the massive color difference, a raw file type also maintains the whites, the highlights, the low lights, the darks, the white balance, it maintains every little piece of data that the sensor captured. Now a JPEG takes all of that data that the sensor recorded and it compresses it into a tiny little box and says, here you go, you can use this now. Basically it lowers the quality and limits the ability to edit that photo. Now, it's not saying that you can't recover some shadows or drop some highlights or adjust some colors here and there, but compared to a RAW, you are extremely limited. How does this affect you in editing? Well, let's keep it simple. You can edit both, but it's the ability, the capabilities that you have in editing that makes the difference. So if you were to edit a RAW, you have full access to your color range, your dynamic range, your clarity, your highlights, your lowlights, your darks, your whites, your blacks, your blah, your blah, your blah. Basically, if the sensor recorded it, you can access it. Whereas a JPEG, again, it's in this nice little box that you can use it. So if a RAW file is this big, well, a JPEG is this big. 
and you got all this data here that you can no longer access. That's the difference. So let's look at an example, because I think if you see it, you'll actually get a better idea of what I'm talking about. So let's take a look at an underexposed photo. I have the raw and I have the JPEG file, and then we'll look at an overexposed photo. I also have the raw and JPEG file. So this is a photo that I took out in Oregon. And as you can see, I clearly exposed for outside of the rock. We're in this kind of little dome thing. And by doing that, everything else is dark. So it's very underexposed. So what we can do is we can actually up the exposure and you can see, whoa, we get a ton of detail back immediately. By doing that, we lost the detail outside. So let's go ahead and lower the highlights. Bam, look at that, detail of the outside. Now let's up the shadows just a little, and look at that. So now we have exposure. It's a little noisy here, but that's, that's gonna happen. But we can see both. Now with a little more editing, we could lower the noise and we can make that photo really nice. So let's take this exact edit and copy it and paste it onto the JPEG. So here's the JPEG, same exact photo, JPEG, paste. Now, you can tell that is a big difference. I mean, look, see the quality is a lot less. I mean, it's just, you can tell it looks a little faded. It's just not as good. So here's, here's the JPEG, here is the raw. Even the color, I mean, you see the color up in the, the top left corner over here? I mean, this even looks better. But if you look at the overall photo, it is a big difference. So you could, I mean, you could work with the JPEG, but it was much better to do with the RAW, much better quality. Okay, so let's go to the next one. This one is a picture I took in Grayson Highlands in Virginia. And it was one of the best sunsets that I have ever taken. I actually have a print available of the sunset because it's so amazing. Plug. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, let me show you this. This is the raw file. Now you can see that the highlights are, it's really bright. So let's just go ahead and lower the highlights. Look at that, coming out strong. We can up the shadows to see more of the foreground. Let's say we lower the exposure a little. Ooh, look at that. Man, see that? Isn't that gorgeous? Now with a little bit more editing. I mean, this is actually how it looked when I was out there. So this was incredible. Now let's go ahead and copy this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this exact setting, exact changes, and we're going to put them on the JPEG. Wow. Look, I mean, that's night and day. I mean, let's look at this. Look at, I mean, look at, oh my gosh. That's incredible. I mean, you see the difference there simply because of a JPEG. That's just amazing. At first glance, there might not be that big a difference, but when you take your photos from your camera, put them into editing, your ability to make your photo your own is, well, your own. So that's why it's important to shoot raw, because a raw file is completely customizable. It's all the data, it's everything handed to you for you to do with what you please. A JPEG is kind of like a secondhand photo. It's like, yeah, it's good, it's probably in good quality, but someone used it before. It's not as nice. <laughs> now to take a raw photo, you actually have to set a setting on your camera so your camera knows to take a raw photo. So I'm gonna show you on my camera, it's a Canon 6D. Most cameras are pretty similar, so once you see it on this, I'm sure you'll be able to figure it out. If not, you can look online and find for your specific camera. So first thing you wanna do is press menu or go to your main menu of options, things like that. Uh, you wanna look for image quality. Now you might have to scroll through these a little bit. I just use my shutter to move through them, but mine's right here. It's image quality and it shows raw. So it's already set at raw, but if I select that one, it'll give me these options, which it shows here uh, raw, a minus sign raw, M raw, S raw, and then JPEG, and then a minus sign, so on and so forth. You may not have all of these options, but I'm gonna quickly go through them. The first one that's selected you see is the full size raw. M raw is basically medium raw. S raw is basically small raw. When you select between them, you see the size in the top right corner, it changes, it goes down. So the M, 26M is megapixels, 15M, and then the size of the file. Below that you have JPEG and you have L's large, M medium, and S small. The quarter circle represents a larger size and the stairs represent a medium size. So you technically have large, large JPEG, medium, large JPEG, large, medium JPEG, and so on and so forth. 
The smaller the size you use, obviously, the smaller the file and the less space it's gonna use on your SD card. So you just kind of pick which one works best for you. Now my camera gives me the option to take both. A lot of cameras do have this ability. So if I were to rotate this over and select say large JPEG, then my camera is gonna take a large raw and a large JPEG. So I get both, but that's gonna take up even more space in my camera. Anyways, once you have your selections figured out, just simply press set and you're good to go. It'll probably say raw there, that way you can see that it is selected. If you do choose a JPEG, it'll show something like that, which is raw and JPEG. I simply just want raw photos, so I'm gonna leave it at that. And there you have it, that's how to set it. As a quick note, the extensions for the raw file types are not all the same. They, they vary per manufacturer. So like a Canon camera would be a .CRW or a CR2. Um, a Sony is like a .ARW or a .SRF, I think. And a Nikon is a .NEF. There, there's several. I'll, I'll put a bunch more in the description for you to see, but just know that they all mean raw file type. For people who like to take a photo and share it immediately from their camera, because a lot of cameras have Wi-Fi ability where you can link them to your phone, you can take a photo and you can view it on your phone right away. Uh, if you have the Lightroom app, you can do that and you can edit it. So they take a JPEG and a RAW. Just remember when you do that, it's gonna fill up your memory card much faster. So either have extra memory cards or, you know, put them somewhere, I don't know, on your computer. Yeah. So let's summarize because that was a lot of information. Let's kind of condense it a little or make a JPEG of it. <laughs> That's terrible. Anyway, so a raw file gives you full access to the data of the sensor, your highlights, your lowlights, your quality, your, your clarity, your dynamic range, basically all of it and gives it to you in a little pretty package for you to do with what you please. The only downfall is it's a much larger file type, so it's gonna fill up your cards quicker and it requires editing and processing before you can use it. A JPEG, basically a pre-edited file type that the camera has decided the kind of the color scheme, it's, it's limited your highlights, your low lights, and it, it greatly reduces your editing ability. However, it's a much smaller file type and you can use it right away. So why take raw files? Well, to do otherwise would just limit your creativity. And in an art like this, you don't wanna do anything that's gonna lower your artistic ability. Ansel Adams once said, you don't take a photograph, you make it. And those are very true words. Photography is an art. JPEGs have their place, but you wouldn't give a painter a paint by numbers book. You would give them a blank canvas. A raw file type is your blank canvas. So that's all there is to it. That's why I shoot raw and why you should too. I hope you're enjoying this journey that is exploring photography. So if you wanna continue, hit the subscribe button below. I post videos every Monday. And if you want some more raw data, <laughs> then go ahead and click the link below and sign up for more tips, tricks, first looks, behind the scenes, and more. See you guys next time. So how does this affect you in editing? How do you edit it? Do you know how to edit it? What, what program do you use for editing? Mm, 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 mm. Oh, really good. Oh, really good.